so this was one of our major announcements at the, uh, at the show yesterday. Um, this is something called the Meisler module. It's named after a, uh, a camera assistant who actually was the inspiration for building something that could be really, really streamlined to handle all of the things that you used to have to deal with four or five different systems for. You know, the, the, the Focus Iris Zoom Control had all these cables and wires and specialized extra stuff. The external time code box was an external piece that you had to put on the camera. Um, if you wanted to do any kind of video transmission, a live HD video feed while you're shooting the RAW, that was an extra piece. And before you knew it, the small little Epic started to turn into this giant thing with all these cables around it. So what you see right now is this system is actually feeding a wireless HD, HD signal to this uh, display. So there's no physical cable going. And you can see there's no latency. This is instant. Right? It's a true video monitor, but wireless. It can run 100 feet away. It can go over HDI, SDI or HDMI. It also has wireless time code. So this becomes your centralized master time code for a double system sound shoot. Um, and the time code that's feeding into the world is feeding to our sound recorder, feeding to our camera. It's hyper, hyper accurate. It doesn't drift. And it can run you know, continuously for, for many days on a shoot without having to relink, rejam. In addition to shooting the, the Red Code RAW, which of course shoots on our mag, we are also now doing a proxy recording on this Meisler module. So this is a little miniature version, which is called the Mini Mag. We'll also build a little adapter for this to go into the larger reader. And then there's modes in the camera where if you want to take your RED camera and turn it into a camera that's recording, say, DNX, DNX HD for TV directly, or other codecs, other professional broadcast HD codecs, you'll have that ability. You can also turn it on to a mode where you're shooting your high-res RAW, your 5K RAW, and your HD at the same time. We have a Slate app we call RedSync. So I'm feeding a master sync point from the camera to everything, right? And now I can use this, hold it up in front of the, uh, the camera to do my slating, right? So when I would normally slate, and that's how you slate the image. Now what's even more exciting is I'm actually connected to the camera via the iPad. So I have complete control of everything that I used to do on all my menus, right? I have control of it from the iPad. I can also go into a look menu. So while I'm shooting, or when I'm setting up a shot, I can go through the sliders, and you can see that I'm actually changing that in real time. See how that's moving? So I'm actually recording that in real time. So I actually have a curve editor right in the iPad app, too. So you get very, very sophisticated color control, right? You actually have individual color curves. I can change the gamma space. A lot of people in our world like to actually either review or work in a red log film mode. So we have a log space mode for the camera, so I can just hop in and out of that. You can email into the iPad preloaded looks. If a grading artist sent me an email, I can grab the email and just say, import the look into the system. And once, the, once I import the look, I just hop back in there and it just shows up. So that's like the warm red look that um, the grading artist would have emailed me to check this out. The Meisler module, I think by the end of the year is targeted and this is kind of a companion to it. So it'll all come at the same time. There has never been a time when post-production and production have been closer. Things that used to be relegated to the film lab or the post house are now happening right on the set or right near the set with laptops or, or towers from both Mac or PC. So this is a collaboration that we've been doing with our friends at HP. And what we did is we worked directly with HP to build our mag readers, our card readers, right into the system. We also built our Red Rocket card right into the system. So when this device ships, when this computer ships, it's fully ready to go. You don't need any external things. It's got the Red Rocket in it for real-time playback, which is what's going on here on the monitor. And we can drop the cards right in and, and record right away. So you know, if I just hit full screen here, I'm doing full high resolution playback of files. I can edit these files right away natively without doing any transcoding on this machine uh, inside uh, Adobe Premiere, which we're also working very closely with. So I can drop these red files. These are red raw files, right? These are 4K or 5K files. This is not HD. Um, directly into a timeline and edit them instantly. And this is our new nine inch display, which is quite large and uh, incredibly functional because it's actually very, very light and very, very thin. So you can see, you know, you can move it around how, how skinny it is. But it's very, very large, and it gives us the opportunity to really get a very large image to check focus, even work with it handheld if you want. This is our new Pro I.O. module, which allows us to have two viewing ports. So now I can attach 
an LCD monitor and one of our um, electronic viewfinders, or two LCD monitors. And one takes over the touch screen, and one becomes the viewing monitor for the camera assistant to pull focus or for the director to see. So this is a Scarlett, um, which is a 4K motion picture camera, 5K stills camera. Um, it's been selling for quite a number of months now. That camera body is under $10,000. Typical working Scarlet package, well under 14,000 US dollars. So as you might imagine, we're selling a lot of those cameras to the independent movie makers, to the episodic film people. Basically anyone that doesn't need super, super high speed at super high resolution are looking at Scarlet's. We are opening a red office in Berlin. We are in the process. We decided that Berlin, you know, it was between Munich and Berlin and we thought Berlin seemed to be really where the, the cinema industry has its most vibrance right now and the independent cinema is really taking off and the, the culture there is very youthful and there's a lot of um, interesting dynamics going on. So we thought Berlin would be the best place to put it. And it's such a small country that it's close enough to get from anywhere to Berlin, right?